All right, so I have a creature that has a ton of different textures. I've got shell, I've got fur, I've got um, pine cone, I've got insect, I've got feather, I've got plant life, you know, just lots and lots of things. So cl my clone stamp layer that I've created specially at the top, and I'm using the clone stamp tool here in the sidebar at 100% opacity, 100% flow sampling from all layers, but I have every other layer turned off except for my merged layer behind it, right? So what that means is I can go on to clone stamp, like the eye here, hold down option, and my cursor becomes a little bullseye, and click, and then it will target and move that eye to anywhere else. So if I want that eye on the top of my shell, I can then paint that in. And then I can paint the other eye on this side because my selection will travel with me. So now I have a nostril as well. <laughs> and I could paint the whole head right here. Okay, so clone stamp selectively copies from wherever you target. Now, what's nice about putting it on, on its own layer is then I can just delete all of it. And what I'm going to use it for is to help even out some of these textures. So where is it most problematic? Right in here on the chest. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the texture of these really nice sharp feathers. And then in my clone stamp layer, I'm just going to paint them in at 100%. Just over the top of everything. Okay. Then, because it's on its own layer, I can take the opacity down on that layer and see what erasing away would do. That kind of works, right? Um, but what I can also do is just layer these different feather textures on top of each other. Now I'm starting at 100% opacity, but with a soft edge, because I'm most worried about the edge. I'm going to bring some of these textures around and down, kind of fill them in. Not on my creature layer, but on this top clone stamp layer. Fill them in and through. And it's tough because the directionality always won't, won't always work. And I could internally composite. So for instance, I could go to layer 21, even though it's locked, and take this big chunk and command J it to unlock it, I guess, and then command J it, go back and lock it. And then with that thing I copied, I can transform it and flip it horizontally so I have a different direction, right? I can even warp it so this is more like the chest. And instead of using this as a, a separate layer component I have to erase the edges from, I can use it as a clone stamp component. So I'll put it over here in empty space, go to my clone stamp layer and clone stamp from it where I need those kind of angles. So I have this major combination of textures here, all on a separate clone stamp layer. And what's great about that is now in that layer, I can dodge and burn it. So I'm gonna burn down the shadows a little bit just on the clone stamp layer, which makes it look different than where I stole it from. Okay. Sharpens it up. And I can go in and selectively erase as well. Maybe at a lower opacity. I want it softer though. So wherever I think I over clone stamped it a little, I can erase away.
and then Command-Z, you know, whenever you need it. And you see how it brings those textures together. Okay, let's see. Now I, I think I need a little brightness in this part of the wing, so I'm going to clone stamp that. Bring some of the brighter wing down to here. And then I can burn just that. And maybe erase away from it just slightly. Take some of the edge off. But see the difference that clone stamp makes in transitioning between those two areas. The other thing about clone stamp is I can transform it. So I can do command T just to the clone stamp and I can warp it and I can push this texture down. Change its shape, seam it a little bit. And I can keep adding clone stamp effects. So let's see, I want something going this way. So I'm going to steal from this, put it right here, and then erase away. So these are all kind of ways to finish off and seam together. If we use that analogy of making a car an assembly, on an assembly line, this is the final paint job and the buffing out of the seams to finish it all off. And you're able to work on it all together this way. Now under the neck there, I want to burn it a little bit more. And then I might want to erase away the harder edge and redefine this combined neck. But then if I feel like that's too hard and too artificial, that's where clone stamp can come in. So I go to the clone stamp layer and I can take a little bit, let's see, of this texture and color and clone stamp that in. I can take a little bit at a lower opacity. You don't always have to do 100% opacity for clone stamp. Oops. Oops. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, my brush is way too big. That's what's going on. Yeah, it kind of samples for you what you're about to do. Okay, so I can steal from these scales. And I can bring some of that in somewhere. Maybe under the eye. With a little bit different scale to the texture. Or if I want to extend some of this fluff at a lower opacity, I can bring a little bit of it up. And you see I'm changing my um, target all the time by holding down Option and clicking again. So it travels with me. Keep the fluff going. Transitioning between these components. Okay, then lastly, I'm just going to do some final <coughs> dodging and burning on the combined layer, and then make sure my clone stamp fits and matches. So I might burn the shadows on the back here, and then go to dodge and just dodge the highlights. And that will increase the contrast, right? But if they get too colorful, then I can go to sponge. Whenever, whenever I use sponge or dodge or burn, I keep it at less than 30% in its strength. 
because the tools move very quickly. And then there's other places I might want a little less color, like on these bristles. Then I want to burn underneath here a little bit more. Burn underneath here a little bit more. Take away a little bit of this color. And on and on. So you can refine and perfect. Lastly, I think I want to clone stamp a little bit on this back leg. That's pretty sloppy. So I'm going to go to the clone stamp layer, hold down option, use the clone stamp tool. And at this lower opacity, start painting in these feathers. And you see how it's almost like the opposite of erasing, right? It starts to blend it in, carries that texture down. I can change my target and do that a little bit on this side too. Breaks it up, and then I can burn it or desaturate it because it's in a slightly different light source. And of course, I can erase away from it. I want to do that with a soft eraser and maybe at a lower opacity because everything's soft edged because I used a soft edge clone stamp. all these beautiful tools we get to use to define our fantasy creature. Put some lighting on this tail. Man, that's strong. <laughs> Take that exposure down a little bit and make it mid-tones. It's always safest to dodge and burn mid-tones. I can take a little of the color away. A little bit of the color away from these back legs. Okay, now some final dodging and burning. And I think my creature is pretty much there. Maybe I want to work on these front legs a little bit. Um, I can clone stamp that in a way that's interesting. I can take the shell kind of hood. Uh, so big. Don't do that. Okay. I can target that and I can just paint that right over the top of these hands. Right at this low opacity. Do that on both sides. And so let's see what that looks like just on the clone stamp layer. It's just a little haze, right? So that's my clone stamp layer. And I don't need this anymore. It's helping bring everything together. But that haze looks pretty awful, right? but it helps knock down the color. So what if I select that out and put it on its own layer, right? So duplicate it from the clone stamp and then erase it from the clone stamp. So there's different ways you can use clone stamp. I'm gonna use this as a blending style, more like a texture overlay. So a customized texture overlay that I can shape right to the fingers. just so they don't look so much like crabs. Okay, now how does that work? Well, I can then take it individually and I can play with soft light, right? Which helps, maybe I double that up a few times. So then that's a little too dark and merge them all together, right? And go to overlay or go to pin light. Uh, pin light's working pretty well. 